Today's the big day. We're gonna put the solar panel up on the roof. It's a, so much easier than you might think. The hardware that you get from the kit is awesome. This is all part of the tiny watt solar kit. I got the weekender one, the smaller one, and I could have upgraded the solar panel kit and gotten the tracks, but I kept it kind of simple. This all came with it. It wasn't an accessory or an additional cost. This is the mounting bar, and it's so simple to put this all together. This can mount anywhere underneath the panel. So the panel sits on top of this bar. The foot mounts to the top of the truck. This bolt slides inside the mounting bar and then mounts right to the foot. And you can position the foot anywhere you want because the bar is underneath the panel. Everything's super adjustable. Well, that's the first pilot hole for the solar collector. I'm just drilling like an eighth inch hole, uh, maybe 3 16 inch hole first, and then I'll drill a bigger one for the bolt. As you can see, I'm positioning the feet so they land at the bottom of these ribs, not on the top, so I can keep this thing as low as possible. And the foot is slotted, so it's adjustable. So I'll be able to set the bars wherever I want because the solar panel sits on top of the bar and I'll be able to lift the bar so it just touches the center rib, which is the highest, and then bolt these things down. Now the only problem I can imagine we might have is getting the truck out of my shop and through that roll-up door once we mount the solar, I'm just kidding. We already measured everything and made sure that the solar panel and the skylight will just clear the jam on that roll-up door. And if it doesn't, we'll let the air out of the tires. Thanks to Devin, who's on the camera, my right-hand, left-hand man, he's got the butyl on the bottom of these feet. I'm just gonna step the feet right down over that hole and I'll get this bolt right through there. And it's gonna be a little tough to get it through the butyl and through the hole, but it'll go. And I got an Allen wrench here so I can thread it down into the truck. And there's no nut on it yet. The bolt's just covered with butyl since I pushed it right through the butyl to get through the foot. And now there's butyl surrounding the bolt and the hole. So as I push it in that hole, it's sealing the hole and the bolt. And I'll just thread that in too just to get it to set in there. And now we can go inside with a wrench and tighten these guys up. The last thing we have to do before we can bring the solar panel up here is drill a hole right in the middle here so we can run our wires right through the waterproof puck that'll go right inside this, in the roof. So this is the same thing we did anytime we put down any butyl or sealant clean the metal off really good. And you'll find on the top of your van all kinds of funny looking things, but there's one little round kind of bump out right here in the center of the van. It's just gonna be perfect for, for me to mount this clam. This is a waterproof um, cable clam, and it's kind of a neat piece. There's several little pieces to it. Let me pull the rubber out. This is the rubber that you're gonna have to either slice if it didn't come sliced and drill a hole through it for the size of your cable. Once you insert it back into the clam, it tightens up as you tighten it down and it'll seal around that cable and around the slice too. This part goes down first once you've drilled your hole through the roof and you screw this down with sealant as well and self-tappers and then this piece goes on top of it and threads right through the top. Little quarter 20 uh, screws go right through the top and thread into this mounting piece. So I'm gonna use a hole saw here and drill a hole right in the center of this. Now the size of the hole is pretty important. This is the cable we're gonna thread through there. So I really could have used a smaller hole saw. Look, it would have fit easily, but there's gonna be cable running through that hole too. So I'll have the cable fitting plus the cable going through that hole. I wanna make sure that both clear easily. So it just doesn't really matter how big the hole is as long as it's you know, gonna be covered by this, by this cable clam. So I ran the butyl around here. And again, I like this little high spot because 
no water is going to sit right there. That way, if the truck's sitting and it's raining really hard, well, the top of the solar panel is going to cover and protect this area too, but there won't ever be any standing water right around this puck, right around this clam. And I'm going to just set this on top of there, squeeze that down a little bit, and I'll run my pilot hole. And then I can put in there the self-tapping, they're actually not self-tapping, they're just metal screws. And these screws are pulling that right down into the butyl and squeezing it out all the way around. And that's it. So that's the hole for the cable. Make sure you clamp this down. Don't try and hold on to it while you're drilling through it because it'll spin right out of your hand. And it's a little bit tight, but I'm going to slice this right now with a saw and we'll be able to pull this around the cable before we put this thing together. And that's it. Now we can take this kind of clam thing, put it, put our, pull it around the wires and then feed it down into that plastic cap up on the roof. Here's what I'm talking about. And the taper is pointed toward the cap, so as it slips into the cap, it tightens up right around that hole and around the slit that we made into the rubber. And once this thing's screwed down, I'm gonna cover the top of it with sealant. About five inches there. That's exactly what I had on the other side and five inches here. So this thing's perfectly centered on the top of the truck. We checked the measurement from the front to the back. Now all I have to do is slide these little guys in right into this slot and then turn it and this will butt right up against the frame. And then then I've got little caps that they sent with a solar kit done. And remember, there's rights and lefts. So what do you got going here? Is this, so, this is a panel you made? Yeah, so this is a panel I made to uh, house the breaker for the uh, jump start and the breaker for the alternator charging. Oh, so we'll pull our power off the battery. Yes. We'll power this strip and then you'll pull a cable off of here for one breaker and a cable off of here for the other breaker. Yes, exactly. So, oh, so it's like a little breaker panel. Exactly, yeah. Awesome. And you're making up your own wire for this. Yeah, we're making up our own wire to go from the oh, breaker to the... Uh... To the pole. Yeah. Awesome, because they're so short. Yeah. Oh, this is great. This will be perfect. It's about time that you met Devin. Devin solves all the tricky problems. And right now, I think he's going to demonstrate how to, how to um, attach one of these cables to the fitting so it never, ever fails. What are you going to do here? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually solder a battery end onto the cable. A lot of people like to just crimp them on, which works. But when you solder it on, you know for sure it's not ever going to come off. And it eliminates the chance of getting corrosion inside of the terminal. Connector. Oh, and that's the worst enemy. Yeah. Because batteries and battery cables are always getting corroded. Yeah. So it doesn't take a lot of heat to do this. And you just want to keep heating it up until the solder melts inside of the battery end. And then you want to fill it about three quarters of the way because um, you want to see the solder actually come out when you put the wire into the terminal end. I'm filling it quite a ways up and you actually can see it bubbling in there, which is the flux inside of the solder uh, melting out the impurities in the metal. And then once it's nice and hot, you just make sure your ends are on the right direction and you stick it right in there and just hold it for a couple seconds. Now that the solder is hardened, now we just need to put a layer of shrink tube on this side and this side to make it 100% corrosion resistant. And be careful because it's gonna be hot, so make sure to use pliers. I've worked on enough cars and done enough electrical to know that in a little bit of extra time and effort into putting shrink tube onto it rather than just wrapping it with electrical tape makes a world of difference. So I'm gonna be using a heat gun. 
I know a lot of people use torches, but when you use a torch, you take a chance of burning the shrink tube itself, and it takes away from the strength and the ability to seal as well. So the shrink tube we're using is actually a marine grade shrink tube, so it also has adhes adhesive inside of the shrink tube, so it actually shrinks to it, and it actually glues the shrink tube to uh, the wire end and to the insulation on the wire. And you want to just take your time with this. You don't want to go too fast and do one spot too long because even though I'm using a heat gun, you still can burn it. And you just want to work your way all the way around and get it to start to shrink. And then you can actually add a little bit more heat and get a little bit closer and take a little bit more time and get it really shrunk on there. So that looks like that's about all of that's gonna shrink on that side. So we'll go ahead and move over to the other one and go ahead and shrink that on there too. And as you can see, I'm still using pliers because this does get very hot while you're doing it. There we go. Now we have a finished cable with an end on each side properly sealed. Now we can put it right on to our breaker and to our junction box. While Devin's doing the tricky part up there, hooking up the panel for the battery and the breakers and all that stuff, I got the job of running the wires back to where the solar kit's gonna live. So I wrapped both of them. There's two pretty good sized cables that Devin had me wrap with that kind of um, nylon stuff that protects it. Like everything under here I notice is wrapped with the same stuff so it's not exposed to anything. And I'm feeding it over the top of every cross beam I can and then I'm using wire tires to keep it up near the top with the rest of the wire and then I'll run it right up through the hole I drilled in the back of the truck. And that's about it. A couple more wire ties and I'll be done.